Hi everybody, my name is Dick van Klooster and in this presentation I will discuss the paper Additional Evidence on Equity Ownership and Corporate Value Written by John McConnell and Henry Sirius Before we start, I would like to show you the presentation outline We will start with the introduction, followed by the data of the research Then I will tell something uh, on the methodology And then I will discuss the results of the paper we will finish with a conclusion and some discussion points. The paper wants to examine if firm value is a function of the distribution of equity ownership where firm value is represented by Tobin's Q. They do this by examining three independent variables. First, what is the effect of equity ownership by blockholders on firm value, where stockholders who own five or more percent of outstanding stock represent blockholders? Second, what is the effect of equity ownership by corporate insiders on firm value? Where corporate insiders represent officers and members of the board of directors. And third, what is the effect of equity ownership by institutional ownership on firm value? Here institutional ownership are institutional investors and companies. Now I will discuss the data. In the research, we have two samples, almost 1,200 firms in 1976 and almost 1,100 firms in 1986. All the selected firms are listed either on the New York Stock Exchange or the American Stock Exchange. Further, financial firms are omitted from the analysis and firms with a Q higher than 6 are deleted to obviate outlier problems. In the paper, they test the cross-sectional relation between Thomas Q and equity ownership. In the paper, they perform regression analysis of Q on equity ownership. They use the following independent variables inside ownership, blockholders ownership, and institutional ownership. They also put a set of control variables into the regression to determine whether the results are sensitive to the inclusion of other factors that have been advanced as important determinants of Thomas Q. The control variables are financial leverage, R&D intensity, advertising intensity, and replacement value of assets. They use a dummy, which has the value of, of zero if there are no blockholders, and the value of one if there are. I would like to show you this graph to give you a better understanding of what they want to test. Previous research already showed that there is a curvilinear relation between Tomis Q and insider ownership. On the x-axis you see the fraction of insider ownership and what effect it gives on Tomis Q. At first the relation is positive, but at one point it becomes negative. That point where it changes from positive to negative, where the derivative, the derivative is zero, we call the inflection point. In this research, they want to test what the effect of independent variables are on the inflection point. In this table, we have the results of the 1976 sample, without the control variables. In column 1, in the green square, we see a significant positive effect of insider ownership, with the inflection point set at almost 50%. In row 2 to 4, they have added blockholder variables where LB1 is the biggest blockholder, LB2 are all blockholders together, and LB3 functions as a dummy. In the red square we don't see any significant effect of blockholders separately on Q. Then in rows 6 and 7, in the green square, we see a significant positive relation of institutional ownership and a positive relation of insider ownership together with blockholders. We also see that because of inclusion of institutional ownership, the inflection point increases to more than 60%, meaning that, when, well, meaning that where, when there is institutional ownership, the insider ownership fraction can reach up to 60.9%. A higher fraction of insider ownership will then decrease firm value. For the sample of 1986, we see similar results as we have seen in the previous sample. There is a positive relation between insider ownership and Q. There are no individual relations of blockholders ownership on Q. 
we also see a positive relation of institutional ownership and a positive relation of insiders plus blockholders on Q. This table shows the results with the control variables added. With the exception of replacement value in 1976, each control variable enters the regression significantly. The coefficients debt divided by residual value and advertisement divided by residual value are consistent with the assumption that both variables reflect expenditures that increase the value of the firm's intangible assets. The positive coefficient on the debt variable is consistent with a tax argument and a free cash flow argument that increases firm value. The negative coefficient on the replacement value of assets is consistent with the argument that firm size and Q are inversely correlated. But also after this effect is controlled for, the relation between Q and ownership structure is significant. Also the curvilinear relation between value and inside ownership is still evident. The inflection points of the curves are relatively, re relatively unchanged from the results without control variables. And the co coefficient of institutional ownership remains positive and highly significant. So we can conclude that there is a strong curvilinear relation between Tobin's Q and the fraction of shares owned by corporate insiders. So at high levels of insider ownership, relation between Q and insider ownership is negative. Furthermore, there is a strong positive relation between Q and the fraction of shares owned by institutional investors. This can be explained by the monitoring effect which institutional investors are tended to do. We don't see a significant relation between separate black, uh, block holders, uh, between separate blockholder ownership and Thomas Q mainly because blockholders are passive investors and they don't give a monetary effect. Then I have the following discussion points I would like to discuss in class. In successful firms, managers can get rewarded with the shares which gives high insider ownership. So high insider ownership is a reaction of the firm's performance, meaning that high insider ownership is caused by the firm's performance and its high Q and not the, way, uh, not the other way around, as the article states. Also, this research doesn't make a difference between active and passive blockholders. As active blockholders monitor more, they should take the difference between them into account. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to discuss the paper on Thursday. Bye.